four ways that pain changes your lower back pain rehab. Now we all know we want to get out of pain, but what a lot of people don't realize is what needs to happen to be able to get out of pain, because it's a huge step that people miss and it's slowing down their back pain rehab. Number one is that it modifies movement. Now in the short term, this is a good thing. In the longer term, it can start to turn into a problem. That doesn't mean it will, but it certainly can. So what we have to do in the short term, yes, is modify the movement, but then we've got to find the right times and the right activities to do to start moving us back towards normal movement. So what that means is when someone triggers their back pain or when someone experiences back pain, but they need to lift something from the floor, what they will tend to do is they will tend to keep their body very upright because that's minimizing the load on the spine because as the body levers over, it's gonna add more um, load onto the lower back. So what they'll do is they'll sort of come back and they'll lift the weight like so. Now in the short term, that's a useful thing to do. But if we continue lifting this way, even when we're out of pain, so if it, we extend that into the long term, because we're associating in the short term, this gives me pain free. So it must be okay to do in the long term. In some respects, that, that perception needs to change. We need to get back to lifting more effectively in that way. Now, although that may have caused the problem in the first place, it doesn't mean it needs to cause the problem in the next place, if you will. So what we need to do is, yes, we need to modify the movement in the short term. So we may use this type of position to lift up. We modify the movement, we remove the trigger, and then we move on into um, what will be a longer term strategy. What we then need to do with that longer term strategy is try and get you back into this position. Because when we modify the movement, certainly into something like this, it's putting more load on the knees. And then what then needs to happen is we need to get the hips working effectively because the knees may not be able to cope with the constant lifting that we're doing from the knees. Now again, that's counter to a lot of um, education that's out there, but the most effective place to lift from is the hips in that position. But a lot of people are scared to go back to it because it was, uh, or it created the problem in the first place. That's not because it's the movement, it's generally how they've done that movement. So if we can improve that movement, we can then get them to lift more effectively, get them to lift safely, so that position doesn't cause them any problems in the future. Number two is it can increase risk of injury in the future. Now this is very much in the initial stages. So this is me talking about niggles, aches, pains, tightnesses. These are all minor warning signs to what could turn into potential future problems. So what we have to do is we have to understand what the trigger is. So what movement are we doing that triggers the ache, the pain, the tightness, or the little niggle that we're experiencing? If we can understand that problem, now it could be sitting down, it could be standing up, it could be both, which could mean that it's just the fact that we're stationary, so it doesn't like being stationary. It could be, like I've just described, it could be this lifting movement, it could be the hip hinge, it could be um, so many different things, so we have to understand what that trigger is. Now if I just take the hip hinge as an example, because it's a very common way that people injure themselves, again, as I mentioned in the last one about modifying movement, it's generally not the hip hinge that caused the problem, it's how the hip hinge is being done that is potentially creating the problem. Or it could be the, the condition of the lower back that when we go into the hip hinge, that it's causing, um, it's causing certain tissues to overactivate, or because we've been doing other movements, lower back muscles may be overly tight, which is then creating aches and pains in that area. Now, if we don't address those early on, then it can certainly turn into further and bigger problems in the future. So it's something that we need to get on top of early. So when I talked about modifying movement, what we need to understand is what movements are 
uh, creating the problem in the initial stages. If we can catch them early, we won't then need to modify movement and do all the things that I've talked about before because we haven't got the, um, uh, the, the extreme back pain. We're just using these initial signals as, okay, I'm starting to get pain in this position or that position. I may just modify it slightly, but if we can learn how to, um, or if we can learn about the trigger and then learn how to overcome it early on, it's not gonna cause us a big problem in the future. Number three is it can leave residual tightness. Now, this basically means after we've had a bout of back pain, it just naturally recovers itself, so our pain goes up, and then just over time, we don't really do anything, but just over time, it comes down. Then we go back to a state when um, we're out of pain. Now, that doesn't mean the injury has gone. All it means is the body has adapted itself and um, possibly created residual tightness elsewhere to compensate for the problem, to help manage the problem. So it may not be the most effective strategy, but it's a way that the body's um, worked it out and how to overcome it in the short term. So what that basically means is, for example, um, over time, the body can create tightness through the hip to help manage problems at the back. So the problem's at the back, but what's happening is uh, the body's tightening up this area to stabilize the pelvis so it doesn't create um, the instability that was causing the, the problem in the past. But what then happens is because of that tightness, it creates a different problem in the future. So what this means for rehabilitation is it we have to then, first of all, work through the, um, the, the residual tightness, but what that can then do is then create the instability through the hip which can then recreate the problem in the back. So when it comes to rehabilitation in that regard, yes, we have to manage the tightness in the hip, so we have to get the hips working properly. We then have to go about stabilizing the pelvis before we can then readdress the problem at the back because the body's created instability at the hip to manage that, but we're taking that stability away from the hip by creating proper moving hips. So in a rehabilitation setting, we have to understand all of that problem and that there is, a, um, there is a process to it. And that we have to understand that when we start unlocking the hips, it could cause problems at the back. So we have to understand that as we go through. So what that's basically meaning is as we get tight at the hips, we may only be able to get that far. So we have to then arch at the back that again is gonna create further problems down the line. So what we're doing is we're, in a sense, we're robbing Peter to pay Paul. So we're not sorting out one problem, but that in some respects is creating another problem. So what we have to do is we have to, in some respects, take on the initial problem and what the body will do is it will tell us the route to go back on. So as a coach for me, I have to understand all of this type of information. So when I consult with someone, when I coach with someone, I can understand that, okay, although we have to unlock the hips, the body could have created those hips as a mechanism to, to stop the back problem. But as we unlock it, we could create it, but as a way of, when we unlock it, we have to stabilize it. We have to then stabilize the spine in order to get us back to proper function, which is being able to lift from the hips with a proper position of the back. So we have to regain the mobility of the hips to be able to solve the problem in the long term. And number four, pain slows the healing process. So this leads me to um, what I would describe as like stage number two of any back pain rehabilitation, which is reducing, eliminating, or modifying the pain trigger or the pain cause. So first of all, we've got to understand it, then we've got to remove it. That's what I've kind of alluded to throughout these four different, um, or the previous three different triggers, but we have to remove it at some point because if we don't remove the cause, we keep, in a sense, the body sensitive to that pain. It's a bit like just tapping away with a, um, with a hammer, just on our thumb there, just tapping away. Initially, it's not a problem, but then if we just keep tapping away at it, and we don't stop it, it's always gonna be sensitive to when we start again, 
that's creating the problem. So for example, if sitting exacerbates the problem, we can't just keep sitting because we'll just keep tapping away at the problem. We have to modify the sitting by the posture, by the duration, by the frequency, so on and so forth. So we have to modify it in a way, so we take that way. We, uh, we desensitize the back to the pain, so we can then build the capacity for sitting. So it's very important that we remove the cause of the pain. And then as we start removing the cause, that allows the body to start the healing process that more effectively. Because as I mentioned before, the pain, the aches, the tightnesses, the niggles, these are all little warning signs telling us we need to do something. So if we just keep doing the problem, it's going to create all those compensations that I've been talking about with the, with the lifting, with the tight hips, with the instability of the pelvis. And then when we start unlocking that, it's potentially going to make your body vulnerable. So we have to keep building things in place so we don't do that. If you're struggling with lower back pain, you need some help with it. You need some help understanding your triggers. You need some help understanding how you can modify some of those uh, postures, positions, those movements, those loads that are triggering the pain. Then just click the link below. You'll go through to my uh, how to overcome lower back pain consultation and coaching where you fill out the form. You go to two or you get sent two questionnaires. You fill those out. They come to me, we then sit down uh, and uh, in the consultation, we talk through what you've written, um, we potentially do some, um, some assessments. I also send you an email where you go through some assessments, you send all the results to me. So basically I do a big data collection at the start, we sit down and do the consultation and the coaching, I then send you a uh, sort of personalized, tailored, specific plan for your pain triggers. So if you want that kind of help, please do just click the link below and I'll be happy to help. That's Chris from Chris Fold Training, I'll speak to you in the next tutorial.